Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure for me to welcome you to this sixth uh, workshop on defense, deterrence, and strategic stability in South Asia, uh, which is uh, being held today. And, and uh, it, it's indeed a very great pleasure. Uh, the very members of the IWSTM, distinguished speakers and panelists, excellencies and worthy participants. It is a matter of great pleasure and privilege for the Center for International Strategic Studies to host this workshop in collaboration with the International Institute for Strategic Studies. The subject of this workshop, as the earlier workshops, is defense, deterrence, and stability in South Asia. The concept behind devoting a full day of discussions on the same topic year after year is to update and observe trends pertaining to the subject. This workshop is the sixth of its kind. It brings together professionals and experts as well as representatives of policy-making institutions and academia is specializing in geopolitical and strategic issues in the, of South Asia. We extend a hearty welcome to the Rawrite of the team. CISS is well acquainted with members of the Rawrite of the team, and we are happy to have them here again. We will hear introductory remarks from Mr. Desmond Bob, Rawrite of the team leader. My special thanks are addressed to Mr. Rahul Chaudhary, in charge of the South Asia program at Rawrite of the he has been the moving spirit behind the joint, this joint endeavor of the last several years. Yes. Another distinguished IWS members will be joining the panel speakers at the workshop today are Professor Jack Hill, Dr. Matthew Harris, Mr. Mark Fitzpatrick, and Mr. Ben Ban.
has special relevance. The world has watched on and regarded keenly many times and pervasively as Trump pronounced his new policies and approach uh, of his own in his own inimitable manner. It involves having the tone of war policy towards this region also. So American South Asia policy in 2017 has not altered much from what it was in President Obama's time. There have been, nevertheless, new initiatives and decisions. Mr. Trump declared the U.S. intention to increase American troops in Afghanistan. Additionally, he also alluded to increased partnership with India to help bring peace in Afghanistan. Pakistan is a skeptical of Trump's policy direction for Afghanistan, and this has remained a multi-million subject within Pakistan. Meanwhile, relations between India and Pakistan remain deadlocked. Ceasefire violations along the LOC remain unrestrained. The issue of Kashmir is still awaits resolution, and there are no prospects for bilateral talks in the near future. On the rhetorical front, the tensions continue to be aggravated, and not much has improved. For example, this year, India celebrated the anniversary of its so called surgical strikes along the line of control that it claimed to have conducted in September 2016. The negotiation process also remains in deep freeze as India has recently discussed both bilateral and regional forums of diplomacy with Pakistan. This is a continuation of the trend that I identified last year regarding efforts by India to control the pace, the scope, and the agenda of bilateral dialogue unilaterally. And whenever talks have materialized, the base and the scope as well as the agenda have been determined by India unilaterally. Anyway, uh, I look forward for an enlightened discussion on the issues of Pakistan, US and Pakistan India relations, which is the first topic of our uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the Asia Pacific region has come to gain greater strategic importance for the international community in part because of China's rise of the U.S. imbalance to Asia. Given the increased presence of nuclear power players in the Indian Ocean region, the issues related to security, balance of power, and naval dominance increasingly draw concern. An informal alliance can be seen developing between the U.S., India, Australia, and Japan on one side, and China on the other. India's neutralization in the IOR, the Indian Ocean region, began with the induction of INS Arihan nuclear submarine in August 2016, equipped with nuclear warheads into its naval nuclear command. Meanwhile, this year, China also established its first military base in Djibouti, where the sole US military base in all of Africa also exists. So there you have both the US and China. Uh, Moreover, under the logistics exchange memorandum of the agreement, the DMOA, signed between the US and India in August 2016, this also means that India would have access to Diego Garcia, a significant strategic group. There is also the factor of US India strategic partnership, which is part of the broader US agreement to the Asia policy and which is certainly a repercussion for the security dynamics of the Indian Ocean region. The somewhat uneasy situation in the Korean Peninsula will also be assessed by our uh, speaker, uh, uh, the double S speaker. North Korea has come to pose the most persistent, persistent challenge for the security of the other actors in the region. More alarming has been the aggravated rhetoric between US President Trump and North Korea, Kim Jong un, who has conducted a series of missile tests, a total of 16 this year, including a couple of ICPM as well as a hydrogen bomb test this year. An effective strategy concerning Pyongyang regime has eluded policy makers, and the audience would most likely be interested in hearing the views of the speakers about the issue. The examination of this topic in the session, second session, I said by our distinguished speakers will bring the necessary focus on the security ramifications of the developments in the Indian Ocean and Pacific regions. 
rhetoric, rhetoric about the South Asian nuclear, nuclear politics in the subcontinent also remains troubling. A large part of India has been marked by the possibility of a shift in India's nuclear posture from no first use doctrine to a comprehensive versus tight option. Following vivid alliance raising the matter and regarding nuclear conference earlier this year, on the refuting, the likelihood of a shift now looms large. On the technology uh, front, there have been some significant developments also in the response to Indian neutralization of the Indian Ocean. This year, Pakistan acquired a second strike capability in the form of the successful testing of submarine launch cruise missiles, Barber 3. Pakistan also developed a MAV capable missile. But with uh, India announced last month the successful testing of a subsonic long range land attack near point. There have been various news reports that the DRDO is working on the air and sea versions of the cruise missile as well. India's drive for acquisition of advanced weapons systems, such as sophisticated missile defense systems, remains a challenge for Pakistan. The introduction of technologically advanced and sophisticated nuclear weapons coupled with India's entry into the exclusive cartel of missile technology and trade in missiles, the FTCR, has the potential of disturbing the strategic balance of the region and may tr trigger an arms competition in the ocean region involving not only Pakistan and India but China also. In, the, in view of the ominous portent, Pakistan has called for a nuclear weapons free zone in the Indian Ocean. Our eminent speakers will look into these matters in more detail in the third session where they will assess the transformation of impact of technologies and also hostile political postures or doctrines and theories. I would now like to uh, say a few words about CISS double S partnership. The double double S and CISS relationship has now acquired a permanence that greatly benefits both big banks. The annual organization of this workshop with the theme of defense clearance and stability in South Asia is indicative of this type of partnership. This workshop provides a valuable forum to Pakistani analysts and academics to exchange views and perspectives with their double 